This is Tom from Engine Pro. I'm here today with Mike Cunningham from ARP and Jamie Ham from Bonafide Customs. Um, we're discussing um, head studs and the proper way to um, install studs and torque studs and what exactly needs to be done. So we're going to go to the professionals <laughs> and talk to them on how things uh, need to be done. So go ahead, Mike. Jamie, he's putting us on the spot <laughs> there. <laughs> so it, it's been a really important thing that um, the, the head stud installation, everybody's done it, we've all done it for years, and oh, one dude. of the things that guys never do is read the instructions. Exactly. You know, we've all done it for years, we know what it is. Well, the, what's really cool is, is ARP's instructions are actually live documents. I don't know if you knew that or not, but they're live. Right. So that means in the system, if they can make a change on the fly, and right. things that they may have done before are changed right away, and it changes on our website as well. So if you, if you have a, 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 an installation you're doing, uh, if you, for some reason you pull the, the instructions out and throw them away. Which we all do. Or dog you, runs away with or it or some, something. Yeah, something. A goldfish ate the homework yeah, or something. Right. So um, it's really important that you read the instructions. Because the way they're installed, where the lube goes, um, you have to be very careful about bottoming studs out. But some studs have a, have a nose on them. Right. And there's ways to install them that each one may be different from the last one you did. Right. So reading the instructions for every kit is, imp is it's very important. really important. Yeah, there, you there, are, that. there are some that you want to make sure, and this is in most applications, you want to make sure that the washer is pulled away and cleaned and dry. And you make sure that the surface here is dry. And right. what happens is over, over time, the, the head the cylinder head guys have gotten way better at machining their parts. And the surface area here where they spot face it has gotten smoother and smoother. And, and so the, the washer actually needs to be dry and this surface needs to be dry so when you put it on, it actually has a spot it can, it can anchor to. Right. And, so, and that may not be the case in every kit. That correct. Say that in your kit instructions. It, it will tell you specifically in the kit what to do with the washer, right. um, what to do with the stud, how you bought it, you know, how you're supposed to install it. Uh, for years, um, we installed based on just tightening it down with your fingers right. and getting down to the bottom of it. And, and I'm going to do it dry here so everybody can see it, but you go down... To Which you'll never do that. Folks, you know, you never do that. <laughs> right. So you put, you put it down, and we've got a tool that we actually introduced at PRI this year uh, for installing studs. And it really um, just, we tell people in our past instructions to use a, a T-handled Allen, right? Yep. And that you, you can just run it down until it just oh, touches. Yeah. Well, what we've discovered is that when you then touch it and then you put everything together and then you go to torque it, it moves the stud further down. Right. So what you do now... And we've, we've, all, we've all felt that when we're torquing yeah, it. Yeah, it, it starts it to goes, move a little yeah, You feel it. So what we suggest now, and, and I say suggest because we can't tell you what to do when you're building your own engine, but um, that we, we, our recommendation is to take it down until it just touches and then back it off a half a turn. Half turn. One half turn, and then you put the dry washer down. If if it's a chamfered washer, you make sure the chamfer is at the top, facing is, up. It's, mm -hmm. That's typical with a bolt. Correct. Yeah, bolts with are like bolt that. bolt kits all come yes. with the chamfered. But you should always make sure that that chamf chamfer would be up. Yeah. Now you got it. You got it uh, dry on the bottom, and then when you take your nut, you make sure and put the lube that lube, you put the lube on the bottom face of the nut. You've already put, now you've put the lube on the threads of the, of the stud, and then you put them down, and you run it down hand tight. Or, yeah. You just run it down, and then... Um, or you can spin it on with or the you fancy can, tool. Or you can spin it on with the, with the tool, and you can take it down. Here, this goes right through the middle and locks on so that you're down there and you've got your half turn out. Now you can tighten this down 
holding your position and to now it's to maintain that half turn right and now it's anchored this thing is really cool i don't know if you saw this maybe you did earlier yeah this has got a magnet rare earth magnet yeah rare earth magnet right here and it holds it in place i think maybe snap-on could learn something yeah really yeah. <laughs> so that's down and uh and then it also you, sends the magnet through the tool and you can hold the holds the nut in too isn't that cool okay I'm buying one. So this is this is really the the thing that uh, it, it's really important. What happens, and, and I know you may have experienced, I know I've experienced yeah. it, that when you have too much lube on this thing, you got lube on the top and bottom of the washer, it creates a double bearing surface. Exactly. And so you're in there with a torque wrench, and you're going, and you get to and whatever your number is, say it's 90 foot pounds. Yeah. So you get to 90, and it doesn't feel quite right. So you keep going. And it's getting closer, but it's not quite there. Yeah. And then it, it'll click in. Well, the right. problem is then you've gotten the, the, the stud, stud in, strip. into yield. Either the stud is going to fail or, 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 or the, the, pull the block. block. Yes. Right. Which, it's an aluminum block. It, yeah. it can certainly happen. Yeah. Yep, and I've had it. Yeah, I, it's, you know, it's... It's because the, the, the torque wrench is measuring the friction. Right. Not necessarily the bolt stretch. We have no way to check that stud... For sure, we're getting the Yeah, we can do it with connecting rods. rods. We should check stretch. But we sure can. With a head bolt, it. it's not possible. It's impossible. So, so you, we you have to accurately get that friction right. Right. With the lubes. I'm putting the lube in the right spot to get that stretch out of that stud. Yep. And and the lube that we we you know we've been working on lube hard for a lot of years, and the ultra torque that we have now. It, it is formulated so you can actually get to within plus or minus 5% of the target clamp load with one pull. And then repeating the pull, right. loosening it and repeating it again, you still stay within that 5%. Right. But if you use oil, if you use you know peanut butter, if you use, there's all kinds right. of things people try to use. To. And the problem is that the, if you watch the curve, it's, it's not linear. It'll go along and kind of arc up and then all of a sudden it'll just... Mm -hmm. It's yielded. Right, right. So now, can we talk about that for a second too, that when you're actually tightening the fastener, I've seen this especially in young first time builders or whatever, my, my youngest son specifically, where they want a herky jerky on the torque wrench. That needs to be a smooth, Absolutely. hold the thing and do it nice smooth one fluid motion. Yep, and that's really important to do that. Well, let, let's back up on that for a second. If the torque wrench is a really important tool in this whole mm -hmm. equation. Certainly. And what you find is that if you took if you took all the torque wrenches that guys use, they probably don't all match. Right. And and that's a critical thing too. And, and I don't know about yourself, but it's it's good to periodically have them calibrated. Yep. Absolutely. It, it, yeah, there you go. There it, there's the calibration sticker. You can send them back to wherever you bought them. Um, that's a snap-on piece. They, or they or if it. I remember correctly, if you bring it to like an NHRA national event, um, at one point, I know ARP had something there to where you could... Yeah, I don't think we have that on the trailer you anymore. Don't? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, at one time I remember you guys had that. Yeah, where you could calibrate, where you could calibrate it at the racetrack. Yeah, no, that's, that's always a good thing. Yeah. I've done it before where I've had one calibrated, sent it out and had it calibrated, and then hooked a double socket up there and checked my other torque wrenches to make oh, sure right. that they were accurate without sending it in for the fee. So if you have multiple torque wrenches and you send one to get it done, you can qualify your other ones you know, you can't put an actual calibration sticker if you're doing medical or whatever, but, but right. at least you know, at least you know for your own peace of mind that they're accurate. Right. And and what's really important, you you touched on it right there, that if you can consistently pull the same amount of pressure right. and get to your number that you're looking for, among all the torque wrenches that you use, right. then you can be way more consistent in your assembly. Right. Now the problem is if if you torque this thing and you've got the extra lube in the wrong places and you continue to torque it up and and when you go into yield, right. now it, it's probably good to mention this in in like especially on an LS but there's a lot of engines today 
that the original fasteners are torqued to yield. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're designed to go to a time. point yeah. and then they start to yield. Get well, to that stretch. In our world, yield is a bad thing. Right. In the OE side, it's for warranty purposes. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll let the thing last long enough to get through warranty and then they're not responsible anymore. Right. But for us, you know, we've got really critical fasteners here that are holding it in place and the engine costs a lot of money. Certainly. And to have, have a faster fail is, is terrible. But if you just take care to read the instructions. Read the instructions. <laughs> and, yeah. get, and follow the recommendations that are in there then your chances of putting together the engine correctly. You know, our job isn't to make it go faster. Right. Our job is to hold it together. So if, if, if we can just get everybody to just understand that we're doing our job by telling you how to assemble it, what the torque specs are. Take a little extra time when you're uh, right. getting things done, like thread chasing. Yeah. I mean, when, once you, if, if you've got a block and you've cleaned it and everything's ready to assemble, uh, it really should be where you run a thread chaser down there and clean it out because debris, when you clean an engine, debris gets in the smaller spaces. Oh, certainly. And, and this is a way that you can actually go through and pull it back out and have it not in there. And then you should use, you know, you should flush it and use air to blow it out. Totally. It needs to be the process before you put it in your hone to put your torque plate down. Those threads should be clean. At that time, that should be right. I know when I do it. Typically, that's when I do that. I chase that thread before I do my honing. When I put my torque plate down, you know, because all of that's critical through that whole thing. It's all about the fasteners. We go through all that, you know, all that uh, work to put the torque plates on to get the cylinder right. But then when we go to put it together, we forget all about that, and we run these babies home right. without that half half turn back. Who knows what that distortion looks like? Yeah, yeah. So it might be so, a waste of your time. And it's, they are, P, they are offering these uh, thread chasers that aren't actually taps. You wouldn't want to tap a new thread with that, but it'll clean the material, the old sealer or whatever you have down yeah. in there, the old dried up oils or whatever contaminants, a gasket. And I think these are available in a just whole, about every size. Every size. Yes. Correct. So you know, if you want to clean the nut. Um, this is the wrong size, but, um, but everybody should have a set of those in their tool in their tool drawer too. So. Hey, hello, hey, you, ladies. You <laughs> Speaking of thread chasers, yes. Yes. so yeah, they do have a kit, you know, that has these uh, five different five sizes cons. for the those yeah, are they're, for they're, the course. Are those right. SAEs. Uh, we have an SAE and metric both. So you know fair. what this is. Should say on the little descript right up It here. doesn't. Oh, no. Yeah. It is SAE, the 911 0006. Yeah, this is the SAEs. Yeah. So, so yes, they it, do have them. It is yes. really important to just pay attention to detail. Okay. Can I ask a question? If we're going to put this into a hole uh, that's not blind. Okay. Like in some applications where it's through to the water jacket, right? Um, you, what are you recommending for that? I know thread, I thread sealer, thread sealer like the the white Teflon, yes, correct, toothpaste P or or, or uh, PTFE. Yes. Yes. I know yeah. I've worked at a place before where they put um, oh Permatex uh, that red high tech. Back in the day, we used a lot yeah, of that. Yeah, you could. I mean, it, but it's. I mean, that was back in the day. That was before any of this. PT, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And PTFE, you know, in, I think DuPont makes the... Yeah. And if they call it Teflon. Teflon, sure. Yeah. Right. So that would be easier too because normally if you're putting the stud into the block, you put your, your Teflon on there, you run it in, and then you got a big goober of it up here that you got to go back and wipe off. If the cylinder head is on there, it's now being... Correct. Now, yeah, this, and, and it really is, a, I think it's important that all of us, if at different times put the studs in the block, slip the head over, and darn if these aluminum heads don't end up tracing onto the thread. Onto the threads. And then it makes it even more difficult right. to install the nut and do it all correctly. The ones out here you could get a little brush on them probably, but the, the ones down inside, especially on an LS type head, yep. 
you're not going to do a good job of cleaning a good enough job of cleaning right. that. Yep. So now this is good stuff. I you know, and I appreciate you, Jamie, coming over here and, and spending that's the time my problem. Here. This is uh, a learning experience for me, and um, I'll probably arm wrestle uh, one of the powers <laughs> that be at uh, Engine Pro for a deal on the, t the tool because I'm crazy about tools. So uh, yeah. my wife, not so much, but <laughs> I tell her all the time that uh, she'll appreciate my tools when I'm dead. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, when she sells them. Exactly. Well, great. Anyways, cool. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate the talk.